Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me and I am talking about watches. Well, welcome back to another instalment in the 10 interesting watches that make me personally think, wow. In this series of videos, I sort of feature 10 watches that I come across as I'm searching for watches myself to either just look at or to buy. But when I come across specific watches that make me really think, wow, well, I put that watch aside and when I get up to 10 watches in that collection of interesting wow watches, I make a video about them. Now, all the watches that I'm going to feature today, I've not had any hands-on experience with. I'm not particularly recommending them to you. I just want to bring them to your attention because there's something a little bit special about them. There is something about them that have made me think, wow. Now, I'm unlikely to buy these watches, or possibly I might buy one of these watches. This watch here was actually featured in the first episode of Wow Watches, so I'm not going to say that I'm not going to buy any. I'm just probably going to say that I'm unlikely to buy them. Now, guys, if you are interested in this video, please leave me a comment below. Let me know any other interesting watches that I should be aware of. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you just click on that subscribe button. Now, as always, with this series of videos, the format consists of me reading from my notepad all the information and bits and pieces that I think is relevant to you guys that you will be interested in. And I'm going to stick a photo of the watch up here. So let's jump straight into it. And the first one is something that I think looks beautiful. A watch that has really been tempting me to press that buy it now button. It is the Mandala Mark II by Second Hour Watches. Now this watch looks stunning. The dial on this one looks absolutely amazing. I really like how the hands work and I love how the date sits on that dial as well. There are quite a few different options in color. I particularly like the silver gray and that's why I'm showing this one, but it also comes in a pale gold, a silver blue, salmon, deep blue and a deep green. If you are interested in this one, it is available for sale on the Second Hour Watches website for 825 Australian dollars. But what are you getting for that 825 Australian dollars? Well, you're getting a very good looking watch, but you're getting a watch that is a 40 millimeter case diameter, which is a very nice, nice sort of on wrist size, which I sort of do appreciate. 45.5 lug to lug. So it's gonna fit pretty much everybody's wrist, I think, with a lug to lug like that. Sapphire crystal, AR coating. It has a scratch resistance hardness coating on that stainless steel uh, case, as well as the bracelet, which is a really nice feature to have. I just think I really like it. And one of the other things that I do like about it is that it contains the Miyota Highbeat 9015 movement. I have found these sort of micro brands or smaller brands are starting to use this Highbeat Miyota movement. And I think that's a good thing. And I think at 825 Australian dollars, this is watch is actually something a little bit special and absolutely deserves a little bit of attention. The second watch on my list is by Bulova. And Bulova is a bit of a strange brand for me because it's a brand that sort of stands out for me. It's a brand that I keep coming back to to look at, but it's rarely do I find a watch within the collection that really stands out to me. This one really stands out to me. This one is called the Bulova Parking Meter 98B. 390. It is a limited edition and it is limited to 5,000 pieces. I think this looks a little bit special. I think it looks a little bit interesting and it certainly has captured my attention. This one here goes for 529 Australian dollars and as you can probably expect at that sort of price, at this sort of brand, we are looking at a quartz movement. It is a quartz Miyota Calibre 0S21. It has a case diameter of 43 millimeters and it has an internal rotating bezel. I love the colors of this one. I like the look of this one. And I think it actually stands out well and truly beyond other watches, especially within their own collection. The next one is a watch that is absolutely possibly on my future shopping list. However, it's not a particularly cheap watch, so it might be sort of a future shopping list item for me. It is the Young Hands Meister Telemeter. It comes in at 2,090 euros. There's the option of an on a bracelet and off a bracelet. I particularly like it on a bracelet. I like watches on bracelets. It has a 40.8 millimeter case. There are two options, one with a plexiglass, one with a sapphire crystal. I think the sapphire crystal version of this one costs a little bit more money. It has the automatic caliber J8803, and I just think it looks beautiful. I think it has a dressy sort of look to it, but I think it also has a look to it that you could still wear more every single day. And I like wearing a slightly dressy watch every single day. It's a little bit interesting and it would definitely stand out in your collection. It would certainly stand out in my collection. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this one. If I can find one on a bracelet with that sapphire crystal at a reasonable price, well, I might consider buying it. 
To do so, however, I'll probably have to sell some of watches in my collection, which would be a bit hard to do, but to buy this one, hmm, I might consider it. The next one's really interesting and it really stands out to me. And I've checked out their website and they do some really interesting dial watches, but it's this one that really stands out to me. It is from a company called Lundes Blues, which I don't believe I'm going to be pronouncing that correctly, but what it means is Blue Mondays. This is a brand that is based in Switzerland. It is a very small brand. It may even be a one-person brand um, with a watchmaker that really wants us to make something a little bit interesting, a little bit different. Something that is a little interesting and different, if you look at that little medallion on the dial there, that is actually a representation of a mo molecule of alcohol. So their brand branding is actually an alcohol molecule, which I think is very interesting. I really like that it has those interesting skeleton hands. I really like that when you turn it around, have a look at that back, you see that alcohol molecule again, and I think that's very interesting. This one here contains the high beat Nyota 9015 as well, 40 millimeter case diameter as well, sapphire crystal, um, a lot going for it. This particular one, I don't think I mentioned, it is the 1100-06. As I said, they have quite a few watches in their lineup. Some very interesting, funky dials. This one here is probably a little bit more simple, probably a little bit more to my taste, but I think it's really, really cool and I do like it. And it's the kind of watch that you have in your collection that very few other people would have in their collection either because it is from such a small brand. This one, if you are interested, is 2,910 Australian dollars. So not exactly the cheapest watch, but I certainly think it's unique. I certainly think it's beautiful. And I certainly think it's very interesting. The next one is from an Australian micro brand from my neck of the woods within Australia as well. So it is really nice to be able to see such a great looking watch come out from these guys from a business that is local to me. This is from Houtman, particularly the Merchton series. It's a fairly new series for them. So they're sort of taking pre-orders for them. And it's quite interesting to see what they've done. They've taken the same sort of case that they have produced for all of these watches and they put four different dials in them. But amongst those dials, there's two that stand out to me much more than the other two, that being the Sport or the Aviator. I think both of those are great looking watches. I think they're both sort of very easy watches to wear, be an everyday watch for your wrist. And at 550 Australian dollars, I actually think that's a really good price as well. You do have to pay extra for the integrated bracelet, but I don't think it's a lot extra. But what are you going to get for that to 550 Australian dollars? We're going to get another, again, a 40 millimeter case diameter. Seem to be going for these 40 millimeter watches, don't I, at the moment? It contains the Swiss made SW200 movement. It has a 48 millimeter lug to lug, sapphire crystal, AR coating. And when you flip it around, check out that nice 3D kangaroo case back. Makes me feel a bit Australian, makes me feel a little bit happy to be an Australian if I had that watch on my wrist. Now let's go big brand, something that we all are aware of and it is a Seiko. This particular one is actually a Pressage, even though when I saw it, I did not consider it to be a Pressage watch. I was thinking, is that a dive watch? Is that a Seiko 5? Is that something else that they produce? But then when I really looked closely and I obviously started reading about it, I then realized actually it is a Pressage watch. This one in particular is the SSA449J. And this one stood out to me just because of the looks of it. I think this looks fantastic. And when I looked closely, I saw that big power reserve indicator and I thought, oh, I know this series amongst Seiko's Pressages. I've actually liked a couple of them. A couple of them I think sort of look a little bit odd, but a couple of them have really drawn my attention, and this one has really drawn my attention. It's called the 60s watch, or at least it's a 60s style. You can see it sort of has that sort of vintage sort of 60s diver aesthetics to it. I don't believe that bezel moves, so I think that's a static bezel. This one here, it really depends where you're going to buy it from, depends on the cost. So if you are interested in this one, really have a look online and find the best price, because I've seen it as low as 710 Australian dollars, but I've seen it up to a thousand Australian dollars as well. So if you are keen on this one, certainly look around. This one contains the 4R57 automatic movement, obviously the 4R series of movements, however, it has that power indicator. And it's got something else that's a little bit interesting on the dial. You'll see that it does actually have a second hand, a normal second hand, but then at the sub dial of the six o'clock, it looks like a second sub dial. It has a hard lex crystal, as we would expect from Seiko. It has a mill clasp, it has a very small looking clasp on it, which we sort of expect from these uh, pressage models. So there's probably not a lot of micro adjust, which could be a little bit of an issue, but I think it certainly suits this watch and the bracelet that comes with it. Now, the next watch may be a bit of an interesting one to point out because it's probably one of the best known watches that is out there. It is known to collectors and non-collectors and it's from Amiga and it is a Speedmaster. And if you were like me, you'll like them. I like the Speedmaster. 
I like it. I think it's quite an interesting looking watch. I'm quite keen to have some personal experience with it as well. However, it has never been something that has sort of been on a grail list for me. It is a really nice watch and I'm sure in person it's fantastic, but I've always felt that it sort of needed something to sort of lift it, a little bit of a wow factor. And since we are talking about wow watches, this is the one that stood out to me. Now there are a few variations of it, as there are with Speedmasters, there's a lot of them, but this is the one that's currently on the website. It's called the Amiga Speedmaster Moon Phase, and obviously it has a moon phase. And for me, some people are going to think, ooh, I don't want that on a Speedmaster, I want a traditional Speedmaster. However, I really think it gives a bit of pop, a little bit of colour, a little bit of something going on, and I think it's probably my favourite Speedmaster. It is, however, not a particularly cheap watch, as we would expect from an Amiga Speedmaster. This one on the website is 16000 Australian dollars, so it's not exactly on my shopping list at the moment. But this one here is, has a 44 millimeter case diameter, 100 meters of water resistance, obviously has an automatic movement um, from Amiga, so it's going to be a good movement. And the reference number of this particular one, wait for it, 304.30.44.52.01.001. Hope you got that one because, um, yeah, it's not something that I'm going to remember. Now for a very cool looking watch, and I think it does look very cool, it's the Bremer Lexington. Now this does come in a couple of different variations or variations of colour. This is the one I like the most. It is 985 Australian dollars, slightly smaller 39mm case diameter. It has a Swiss made STP 1-11 automatic no date high beat movement, which is great, especially if you're going to pay that sort of money for a watch. It has a really cool sort of art deco sort of looking dial. Really like the indices, those sort of arrows, which are also apparently loomed around the outside. So it's a very cool looking loomed watch too. And it has a really cool, interesting looking rotor on it on around the back. So that's quite a nice sort of thing to stand out. And I quite like this sort of art deco looking watches. I like the sort of angles. I like the different colors and the things that they put together. So this one really stood out to me when I saw it. And how's this for a slightly differently configured chronograph? When I saw this, I thought, wow, I really like how they divide the dial up. I really like how it looks a little bit different to what you expect from a chronograph. Chronograph. It is from Sonomaster. They call it the Modern Series. Now, not a cheap watch, unfortunately. It is seven thousand four hundred and twenty-five Australian dollars. This video is not so much about showing you affordable watches. It's just finding interesting watches for you. So please keep that in mind. Now, forty-three millimeter case diameter. It has a caliber RSV BI one twenty automatic movement inside of it. It is a high beat movement, and it also has a sixty our power reserve which is also very nice and i really have to say that i love how they divided that dial up and it just sort of reimagined a chronograph well, at least from my perspective and last but absolutely by not least it is a very interesting watch and it's a watch by hamilton this one is called the jazz master face 2 limited edition it is limited to 1999 pieces it is hamilton's h32866781 now, when you look at this watch, you think, wow, wow, that's really, really interesting. And that's what I thought. And it was already going to make this list by just looking at what it looks like, just as you can see in the photo. But it's got a bit of a party trick to it. Check this out. The whole dial spins, turns around and locks in the other way. So you can wear this watch front or back. When you do flip it around to the back, you are obviously seeing that automatic chronograph feature inside of it. The case is quite big though, but however, the shape of it makes it quite big lengthways. So perhaps it's not quite as big as we sort of feel when we say these are 53 millimeter case diameter. That is a big sort of a thing. It can take the H41 caliber, which has a 60 hour power reserve, um, 24 millimeter lug width. So it's got quite a big lugs on it. So this, this is gonna be quite a big watch on your wrist, but it's not particularly cheap. And I know I've mentioned a few watches on this list that are particularly cheap, but this is, oh, I guess, cheaper than some of the others that I mentioned. 6150 Australian dollars. I think that's a really funky looking watch. I love how you can flip it around. I like the look of it. I like the funkiness to it. At that sort of price, I'm probably not going to be interested in this one, but I'm certainly interested in seeing it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. As I said, if you have any watches that you think really stand out to you, I'd love to hear about them in the comments because I love seeing interesting watches, especially if you see something and you go, wow, look at that. That's very interesting. I want to see it. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.